For today, please meditate with me on the topic, Nevertheless, Examine Yourself. As educators, we really look forward to our days off. Indeed, after the helter-skelter nature of the start of a school year, September tends to offer us a few strategic pauses. A short week here and a short week there. Ashamedly, we get so caught up in having that much-needed break that we give little to no thought about the significance of the day, just why the schools are closed. Today, 9-16-2021, we are closed for Yom Kippur. For our Jewish brothers and sisters, it represents the most significant day of the year. It is a day of atonement. Yom Kippur is the culmination of the period of introspection and repentance that takes place following Rosh Hashanah. In short, this is a period that is heavily focused on self-examination. Our focus scripture, taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5-7, through 7, references just such a call to self-examination. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you failed the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. This portion of scripture details the Apostle Paul's final admonishment to the Corinthians. Examine yourselves. Test yourselves. Is Jesus Christ residing within you? Are you being guided by the Lord? Paul then invites the Corinthians to give an assessment of him. I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. I trust that you see Christ in me, in my walk and in my talk. But then in verse 7, Paul is saying, nevertheless, nevertheless, now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. Paul is saying that, as a leader among you, I trust and pray that I am setting for you the right example. But nevertheless, whatever you think of me, even if you think I've failed, nevertheless, examine yourself. Paul is emphasizing the importance of being steadfast in the faith despite what is going on around you. It's in that spirit of self-examination and determination that we embrace this day away from school. Just over three weeks into the school year, the struggle has for sure been real. Beginning with a week of training and professional development that seemed to fluctuate between being confusing to somewhat chaotic. Struggling to procure the needed resources to resume in-person learning. Trying to ensure the safety of the entire school community as we welcome back our scholars. Adjusting to different start times. Dealing with transportation issues. Dealing with transportation issues. Put it all together and it's enough to make you want to holler and throw up both your hands. But nevertheless, examine yourselves, educators. Do you still have faith in education? Despite what's going on around you, are you still committed to building up and empowering young people? Nevertheless, does that question that was broached during convocation way back at the beginning of August still resonate within you? And how are the children? It's really important from time to time to revisit that question in our minds in order to bring us back into focus. You see, that's a personal question that doesn't depend on what's going on around us, but is asking us to nevertheless examine ourselves as to whether we are doing all we can to fulfill our commitment as educators for the children. Like Paul made clear to the Corinthians, It doesn't even matter what we think of those above us, those making the decisions that impact us in one way or another. No doubt we may get frustrated by calls for a half day and a school closure that went horribly wrong. But nevertheless, it's in our nature to trust that such decisions, while errors in judgment they may be, don't take away from the fact that from superintended height on down, we are all just as committed to doing what is right by and what is best for our scholars. But nevertheless, 
despite what we may have thought of the powers that be, if even just for a moment at the height of our frustration, we still committed ourselves to do what is right even though they may seem to have failed. We still provided supervision for the students who had already shown up to school. We still fielded the calls from confused parents and confused staff. We still sent messages out to our school community. We still tried to provide for some semblance of a virtual day of instruction, even though we lacked the technology to support it. Nevertheless, we still operated within our calling as school leaders because our calling does not depend on those above us, but is anchored in our commitment to our scholars. Many of you are familiar with a motivational speaker and empowerer of school leaders by the name of Principal Baruti Kafele. I had the privilege of hearing Principal Kafele speak in person, person several years ago while he was still a full-time principal. One of the many things that stuck with me throughout the years was his experience of daily affirmation. He stated that each morning he would get in front of the mirror and ask himself three questions. Who are you? What are you about? And what is your most recent evidence? For the Christians among us, this being the prayer pause and all, we start off by asking, who are we in the faith? Does Christ reside within you? Is your every decision guided by the Lord and rooted in his word? For you as an administrator, who are you and what are you about? What are your core beliefs and values? How committed are you to the business of educating our youth? What do you stand for and what do you stand on? What are your non-negotiables? And then, what is your most recent evidence? What do you do each and every day to demonstrate that which you say to validate who you say you are and what you're about? How does that affect your decision making? How does it influence your leadership? Despite whatever may be swirling, swirling around you, how do you prompt, motivate, hold to account your entire school community and or all who are within your sphere of influence to those things you know to be right and true for our young people. As we return to our buildings tomorrow, there are sure to be problems. There will be challenges to face and seemingly impossible issues to resolve. Nevertheless, I trust and I pray that you will examine yourself and commit yourself to walking in your calling as an educator. It's not about others. It's not about circumstances, but it's all about you as an individual. That's all you can fully control. Nevertheless, examine yourself and do what is right. Nevertheless, amen.